I think some of you listen to, you know, motivational speakers, um, probably The Secret and a whole lot of other things that actually make a lot of sense on how to become a millionaire or the secret to success. All of them will tell you, it's easier said than done, but all of them will tell you, try and focus on your interests. If you can do something that you love, then you're not really going to work. Much easier said than done. Um, I'm one of those people that if it came down to me, I would just want to be a racing car driver, but I don't think I'm going to make money out of that. So it doesn't, I don't know if it really works for everyone or not. But if you can, folks in you've got a passion for food, or if you've got a passion for exercising or exercise equipment or gymnasiums or clubs or whatever it is, and you're able to, and you're interested in getting a franchise, and you're able to find a success story somewhere else and replicate that by bringing, becoming a franchisee, then that makes a lot of sense, right? Because your experience and your skills might already be there if you, if you like it or you've been engaged. Um, they're definitely going to come on board a lot faster, yeah, if there's a, a good interest in that. The fact is, though, in our region, a lot of people will buy a franchise and then they will go to an agency and bring in a whole lot of people from the Philippines or from other countries, Ukraine or whatever. There's a lot of places now. Give them training and put them out in the store. You know, I've seen that a lot. And I miss the way it is in Europe or Australia or even the US where the owner usually is running even a small collapse store, for example. But there are things to consider. You know, one of the, it's going to impact the way you think about it. And then have a look at the market. Obviously, you want to bring something in that will work, you know. Um, do you think it would work in the market? How much could it grow? You know, what sort of success rate are you going to have? Your finances. What if you don't make a profit for the first two or three years? Are you able to support yourself? What are your responsibilities? Um, you know, you need to probably have some cash flows and reserves just as a backup if things don't go as well as you thought. It's very exciting at the beginning where, you know, you're just looking at the, at the upside. But, um, you know, things go wrong very quickly if you don't have that, that plan for the downfall. So selecting the best option, if you're looking at getting into a franchise, usually you would look at a 10 to 15 year um, decision, either in the same unit or if you're going to be expanding to different units if things are going wrong. Okay, so just keep that in, you know, keep that in mind as the time period that you're looking at and the type of things you might be going through your life. It might even take that long for you to have a unit that would be, you know, something that you could sell or move. If you're able to do market research, uh, it's very important. It's very difficult in our region sometimes to get the right type of, of um, data that you need to, you know, to do your, all your analysis. But sometimes it's a matter of standing out of a location and counting how many cars drive by or how many people park or, you know, what time people are there. It, it's, um, I've even seen people go around, you know, when they've bought like mini markets and they've counted exactly how many houses are around there. They don't have access to the data, but they estimate how many houses, how many cars, how many people. Whatever you can get your hands on in different locations uh, makes sense. If you're moving into existing things like shopping centers, you'll find that there's a lot more data that um, they'll offer you. Don't always trust it. Um, they do exaggerate some of their, you know, cook call and, and other things. Um, are you actually bringing something unique, in something new, or and it doesn't have to be, you know, a unique product into the country, but it could be at least beginning off as a unique product to that location, and um, have a good look at who your competitors are in the, you know, if it's not uni. What are they doing? How are they running it? Um, how much passion is behind their setup? Does it look like a success story or not? Um, how much care are they taking with service of their customers? Um, how do they handle complaints? That gives you a good idea if there's someone there that's serious or not. And then if you go somewhere because you see a competitor that's doing quite well, that's also a valid strategy. 
So, you know, you're in a location where there's already a lot of people doing well, then that makes sense. And if you go back to our Middle Eastern culture, you know, if you go to somewhere like Damascus, not now, but possibly, you know, before um, all the problems, you will find that old Arabic market tradition of, you know, all of the spice places being in one place, all the material stuff being in one place, all of the syrup places being in one place. And that still works as well. So just because there's competition there doesn't mean don't go there, but just see if it still makes sense for you you know, to, to join in or not. So I have a very close look at startup costs. If you are getting into a franchise, they'll tell you what they are. If you're getting into a franchise that's already in the country, they will give you a lot more detail, including um, all of the fees, legal fees associated with it. Um, if you're looking at somewhere in Gulf, you have a lot of costs that people don't always look at. You've got staff housing, um, staff meals. You've got visa renewal, which went from three years to two years now. So essentially, they put the price up by doing that. Um, you've also got a lot of challenges with um, ministries, health cards, inspections, um, and things take a lot longer than you think if you don't probably have someone very strong working with you. So when you're looking at a franchisor, there's some of the things that you really need to look at on the ground because they can blow the time out. And if you've already committed to a place where you're paying rent or you're actually you know, going through cash, um, the last thing you want to do is have a one or two month delay because you, know, you don't have the right staff housing and you're not going to get right labor approval or something like that. Okay, make sure you have enough working capital or access to it if you need it. So if you can get a line of credit or um, you can pull equity out on a property or something that you have, that, that's a good option. Um, there's new funding options you can use. So I mentioned crowdfunding earlier on. Um, that's also something to, that could be an option. But with a franchise, it could also be a challenge because it could be ruled against you using some of those things. Um, have a look at what type of margins that you can have. Um, in existing franchises, that data should really be there. Okay, go through it and uh, look at, you know, how long did it take, when did it take, what sort of clientele did it have, and see how many, how many of those things you can rescue on that basis. 